and welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I have a review for you, and the product which I will be reviewing is this. It is a fountain pen. It is the Pilot Custom 823 fountain pen, to be exact. Now, this is a very interesting pen for the Pilot line, because if you know anything about the Pilot fountain pen line, almost all of them use a cartridge or converter filling system meaning that the filling system is not integrated into the pen. It's external. You have to put a cartridge in or you have to put a cartridge converter into the barrel of the pen. They have two pens which have an integrated filling system. One is the Custom Heritage 92, I believe is the number designation. That has a piston filler. And then this, the Custom 823, has a vacuum filler system. What that means is that you have this blind cap on the end. You unscrew it. There's a plunger inside the barrel pull this out, pull the plunger back, dip the pen into ink, obviously with the cap off, push the plunger in. As it travels down the barrel, it creates a vacuum. When it gets to the end of the barrel, that vacuum is released and ink is sucked into the pen. Now what that means is you have a very, very large ink capacity. With a full fill, and I'll show you how to get a full fill later in the video, you have over two milliliters of ink, which is a huge amount. The normal cartridge is around half a milliliter. Most um, piston fillers are a little over one milliliter. So this will hold a very, very large amount of ink. It's very, very cool. The color I have this in, or the color I purchased this in, is the Black Smoke Demonstrator. I'm not sure if it's picking up on the video, but this is a little bit see-through. You can see the ink sloshing around in there. You probably can't, but I can. Now, if you buy this from an American pilot distri distributor or retailer, it only comes in an amber color. It's an amber demonstrator color. But I got this from a Japanese retailer, and they also have this black version and a clear version available in Japan. They're not sold in America. This is a spendy pen. Um, the American retailers sell the amber version for around $288. I believe that's the price on Goulet pens. And then I think Amazon is around the same price. But if you get, uh, if you purchase it from Japan, you can get it for around $234. There's Engaika.com is a really good website for purchasing Japanese pens or Japan market only pens, and they'll ship them to America. I got this particular pen from an eBay seller, and I got a really good deal because it was a seller who had. A, a huge amount of different Japanese pens. They had a bunch of these Pilot 823 pens and they were going for around 229, but he had this one as an auction and I'm not sure why. And it was listed as used, but then in the description it said it was new and it was new when I got it. It had the stickers and the box and everything. And so I ended up getting this for 139, which is about $150 cheaper than you would get if you than you would purchase it if you got it from an American retailer. You're probably not going to find that deal all the time, but if you search around on eBay and if you're willing to buy it from Japan, you can get it for around 230 or so. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a box opening. I'll show you how the pen comes. It's a little different packaging when you get it from a Japanese seller than if you were to get it from an American seller. Then we'll fill the pen with ink, and then eventually we'll do a writing sample, and I'll give you my final review of how I feel this pen has performed and what I think about it. So let's get right to it. Yes, it is I, the ghost of Bradley Pass, and I'm about to open up my Pilot Custom 823. Now, because I purchased this from Japan, the packaging is different than what you would receive if you purchased this from a Pilot North America dealer. The Pilot North America dealers have a larger box, it's cloth lined, and there is a 70 milliliter bottle of ink included with the pen. You do not get that if you order the pen from Japan. It is a much, much simpler presentation, not quite as fancy. But that's kind of the trade-off for paying less for the pen. So let's open up here. We just have a very simple cardstock box. Sounds like something's in there. It is a little bit of information. Let's take a look. Oh, looks like we have information on filling the pen. One side Japanese, one side English. Uh, yeah, nothing too exciting here. So anyway, we shall put this to the side. Now to the box itself. This is definitely one of the most plain and unadorned pilot boxes I've ever seen. In fact, I thought I would, I'd be getting one of their kind of hard plastic boxes with the clear window on top. I thought that was how these Custom 823s are packaged in Japan. This is just a cardboard, fake leatherette sort of covered box. Doesn't even have a pilot logo on the outside. But anyway, I don't care. I don't buy the pen for the box. If we open her up, 
there is a pilot logo there and there's the pen the custom 823 in black smoke sort of a black demonstrator style um, put that aside the box itself has nothing else obviously since there's no cartridge or converter needed there isn't one included so very very simple very basic put that away and here is the pen first time I'm seeing it quite lovely very classic shape very classic cigar shape reminiscent of you know the Mont Blanc 149 or 146 many pens have used this shape and style in the past black with gold rings and as I probably mentioned in the intro this is the past so I'm not sure what I said in the future this is only available in the amber color in the US but I purchased this from Japan so they also have the smoke black and a clear demonstrator version available in Japan and I thought I'd get the black just wasn't totally sold on the amber and I think this looks quite nice so here we go the pen has been cleaned of its sticker residue that's kind of annoying pilot don't put stickers on pens that cost a lot of money it took me about 10 minutes to clean all the sticky residue off but anyway shape of the pen as we mentioned very classic cigar shape I'm not totally usually into gold furnishings on a pen but I think it looks all right in this case um, so these are gold plated you can see the clip here fairly unadorned just has pilot written on there rather large ball at the end but I find that actually kind of attractive and it seems like Pretty good tension but that ball definitely helped get it over a shirt pocket or pants pocket something of that effect one band at the top we got a double band here you can see it says custom 823 pilot made in Japan and then a series of three stars and it's actually very cool because it's filled with a lacquer if we can get up there so it makes the writing very clear and easy to read very nice touch and then to this end where we have the cap for the plunger mechanism which you can unscrew and then a little gold detail there as well now this is the one feature of the pen that some people don't like is that when you want to write for any length of time you have to unscrew this cap pilot says about two millimeters because there is a washer inside on this plunger I don't know if you can see this operating within um, but there's a washer on this end of the plunger which actually shuts off the feed from the ink reservoir and that's kind of a feature of this filling mechanism and it's something good for preventing your pen from leaking if you go on an airplane you have air pressure changes it won't leak because the ink reservoir is actually cut off from the feed but if you start writing with this obviously there will be some ink in the feed and you could probably write a page or two without unscrewing this but if you want to write for any length of time you do have to unscrew this cap I find that a minor annoyance and actually once we open this up and take a look I'll show you maybe with a loop I can get a little closer and show you a workaround for that anyway I think this is very attractive it's not as clear in the black version as it is in the amber and obviously the clear version um, but I think you can still see the plunger arm in there and you'll obviously still be able to see your ink level when it is inked up so let's take a look at the nib cap screws off there's the section just kind of a shiny plastic this is resin um, which means plastic but this has the feel of I guess you could say the precious resin that uh, Mont Blanc are famously made out of which again is just plastic but it doesn't feel like cheap plastic it feels like very very nice plastic if there is such a thing we can take a look at the nib and this is the pilot number 15 nib which is one of the largest they have in their normal production line in fact <clears throat> I think there's number three number five number 10 number 15 there's also a 20 but it's the same size as the 15 just a different shape and there is a 50 but I think that's some kind of crazy special edition giant nib so this is pretty much the largest in their normal line of pens <clears throat> and the largest in the custom line but very attractive 14 karat gold 
a little bit of scroll work on there. You can see it says Pilot 14K 585, which is you know 58.5% gold, which is what 14K means. Number 15, and then a medium. I did get this in a medium. Now this is a Japanese medium, so of course it will probably be a bit finer than a Western medium. But it's a fairly large nib, actually. I mean, you can see it in my hand. That's a pretty good size nib. I find that very nice. And we've got threads here. You know, I do see one little seam from the injection molding on the threads. I don't know if you can pick that up or not. I don't feel it, and the threads are not sharp at all. Um, not obtrusive, but yeah, there is one little seam there, which is a little disappointing. But other than that, the fit and finish seems very nice. I don't see any other seams anywhere. The operation of this, let's see if we can do this. There is sort of a positive stop. So once you've unscrewed this cap all the way, there's kind of a click there, a positive stop to show that you've engaged the plunger mechanism and then you can click it again. So that's where you would keep it when you were writing and you would unscrew the blind cap to open the, or to allow ink from the reservoir to get into the feed. And then if we pull the plunger back, that has a nice positive feel. Yeah, that works quite nicely. Very smooth, very precise feeling. So let me grab my loop and I want to take a closer look at a few features of this pen. First, the nib. You can make that writing out now a little better. Pilot 14K, 585, 15, medium. Nice scroll work. Solid gold color nib. I think very attractive though. And you can see that medium point is a pretty fine medium by Western standards. Looks like I've got some hair stuck in there, some fuzz. And then the feed looks to be just plastic, not ebonite. Um, but yeah, I think very attractive. And then if we can look inside, now here if we look at the end, uh, if I can get this in camera properly, you see the flat sections on the threaded area for the blind cap, or where the blind cap would thread into the barrel. Those flat areas there, and if you're familiar with Twisby pens, you should be familiar with the Twisby wrench. That will fit this pen, and you can use that to unscrew this um, plunger assembly. Or I'm sure there's all sorts of improvisa improvisations you could do to actually unscrew this. It might void your pilot warranty though, so I would check into that first. I'm not totally sure about that. But if you wanted to, you could unscrew that and you could take apart the plunger assembly. Now right now I'm showing you the end of the plunger. And you can see at the top there's a much larger washer. And at the bottom there's sort of a conical washer right at the bottom there. If you were to disassemble the plunger mechanism, you could very easily take off that smaller plunger, or not smaller plunger, that smaller washer, and that would make it so you would no longer have to unscrew the blind cap to use the pen. It makes it so the ink reservoir is in contact with the feed at all times. It would also make it so that you couldn't cut off the reservoir if you're on an airplane or something like that, but that's kind of the trade-off you'd have to make. So if it really annoys you to have to unscrew the blind cap to use the pen for any length of time, you could remove that washer, and that is a fix. But like I said, I'm not sure if Pilot would be irritated. They probably would be if you did that, and it might void your warranty. So let's talk a little bit about the size of this pen. Once again, I have giant Monster Free cans. This is 8 inches from here to here, 9.5 inches from here to here. Giant Monster Free cans. So this pen is not going to look very big compared to my fingers or my hands, but it is fairly large. Um, it's a little longer than a, or around the same length as a Mont Blanc 149, and maybe a little longer than the Pelican M1000. It's not as wide as each of those pens, but it's a fairly large pen. It does not look large to me. You can see when I have it, it's almost not long enough to use unposted for me. But again, I have giant monster free cans. Posted, it is, eh, it doesn't feel like the balance changes very much. I notice when I have it unposted, obviously it's not inked up right now, but it feels a little nib heavy, like the weight is going forward, and I'm assuming that has to do with the 
plunger mechanism within, but then there's also this, this bar that goes all the way through the pen. So it's pretty well balanced, and because it's resin, the cap is fairly light, it doesn't really do much to the balance. So I don't know, I usually prefer to write with pens unposted, but we'll see. I'll have to play with this a little bit. But again, this is a larger pen, so don't be fooled by the size of the pen in relation to my hands. It's larger than it looks. I just have giant monster free cans. So it feels substantial, it doesn't feel heavy to me at all. If I can compare it to a pen which most of you will know, the Lamy 2000. The Lamy 2000 is inked right now, so they feel very similar in weight. I would assume once this has, um, you know, the 1.5 to 2.2 mLs of ink that it can carry, it might overtake the Lamy 2000 a little bit. And if we compare them size-wise, you can see that it's a good amount longer when capped, and then when both are uncapped, it looks like a fair amount longer when uncapped and then posted we've got again a fair amount a good half inch or so longer than the Lamy 2000 so those of you familiar with the Lamy 2000 and I'm sure many of you are can maybe use that as a size comparison and determine how it will fit into your hand for me it fits quite nicely actually I think this is going to be very comfortable the section is a really nice width actually. I was worried it was gonna be a little thin because it does sort of flare down from the um, threads there, but it's a good size. I really feel like that's pretty much perfect for me and I can kind of grip up on it a little bit. I like it. I think I'm gonna enjoy using this. So what about the filling mechanism? That is one of the more unique aspects of this pen it has a massive ink capacity. The fact that this does not have to have a piston arm taking up much of the barrel like most piston fillers means that pretty much the entire barrel can be filled with ink. And I have heard reports of 1.3 to 1.5 milliliters for a normal fill. And using a little technique, which I'll show you here in a bit, you can actually get about 2.2 milliliters in this pen, which is a crazy amount of ink. It's ridiculous. The Lamy 2000, for instance, gets just under a milliliter and most piston fillers are around one milliliter, maybe less, maybe a little more, but that's a ridiculous amount of ink. It's quite impressive. So let's actually ink this pen up. I thought it fitting to get some Iroshizuku ink. This is Skio. It is a dark blue. I think it's supposed to be like moonlit night, something of that effect. It's quite nice. The night sky. A little bubble. There we go. So, unscrew the cap, obviously. We've already unscrewed the blind cap here. We pull out the plunger. We submerge this into ink. Now obviously, I don't know if you can see, the filler hole is down there at the end of the feed. And so you have to submerge that, at least up to the section here, to draw ink into the pen. One thing I did want to point out before I throw ink in here is you can remove the nib and feed. It's a simple friction fit. So even though I don't know if I would recommend yanking this out, um, depending on what pilot thinks about that, voiding your warranty or not, and if you want to do your little adjustment there, take that washer out so you don't have to worry about unscrewing the cap when you write. This is quite simple. You just pull the nib and feed out, um, and it's just a simple friction fit. So you can wash your nib, wash your feed, rinse them out when you're changing inks. I don't know about unscrewing the section from the barrel, Supposedly Pilot says that that would void your warranty once again. I don't know. I'm assuming it's fairly simple to do so. And I don't know if they have silicone grease in there or some other sort of grease um, to lubricate the threads, but you might have to reapply some silicone grease or something. But I would think with being able to pull out the nib and feed and just pumping water through this with the vacuum pump method um, that you should be able to get it fairly clean without having to disassemble the entire pen. But anyway, just thought I'd point that out. So, we have our plunger pulled back. We've got our ink here. Now I hope that you can actually see the ink going into the pen. I don't know if you'll be able to. Could you see that at all? <laughs> I don't know if the camera picked that up. But there is ink in the barrel now. 
Perhaps the black isn't quite as much of a demonstrator as I thought it was, but the ink reservoir is filled up a little over two-thirds of the way. And supposedly with one plunge of the plunger mechanism, you get around 1.3 to 1.5 milliliters. Now, if you want more, what you can do, this could be dangerous, is you can take the pen like this, pull out the plunger with the nib pointed up, definitely. And obviously there was still some air trapped in here. So what you do is push the plunger back in again, being very careful to make sure that once that air pocket, which you probably can't see, gets to the top of the feed, you can maybe look to see if you're pouring any ink out there, you stop, you keep a hold of the plunger where it was when you were pushing the air out, you insert the pen back into the ink, and finish the stroke. And there we go. I don't know if you can tell, but it is filled all the way to that, uh, to the end of the barrel. That is about 2.2 milliliters of ink. That's a lot of ink. So I'm going to wipe this nib down, and we'll see about writing with this baby. Okay, so let's try to do a writing sample with this pen, the Pilot Custom 823. We shall uncap it and we unscrew the blind cap a little bit to get the ink, ink flow going. I've had this pen for a couple weeks now, so I think the nib has kind of worked into the way I hold the pen and the way I write. So here we go. The Pilot. Custom 823. This is in a medium nib. Um, and the ink is Hiroshizuku. Hiroshizuku. Spelling is correct, I believe. And that is Skio. This table is shaking around everywhere. Hopefully it's not going to be picking up too much in the video. But if we do a little bit of quick brown fox action here. There we go. The pen writes pretty smoothly. It's got a little bit of feedback. Um, if I compare it to my Lamy 2000 nib, that nib is glassy smooth, and I know not everyone has had that same experience with the Lamy 2000, but my particular nib anyway was very, very, very smooth. Almost to the point, someone like me, I mean, you can see by my handwriting, I'm still working on it, trying to improve it. And I don't know, I'm kind of in an awkward position here, so it's not looking amazing at the moment. But with the, with the Lamy, it's almost too smooth, perhaps just for where I'm at in my handwriting right now. I need to feel the paper a little bit. And this Pilot gives me just the perfect amount of feedback. It's not scratchy in any way at all. I don't know if the camera can pick up the sound at all, but you hear a little bit. There's a little bit of feedback from the nib, but it's not at all scratchy. And I can just feel the paper. And this is Rhodia paper, it's very smooth but I can just feel the nib going over the paper a little bit and it really helps me know where the tip of my nib is and it helps me write a little better than I might normally write, let's say with the Lamy. My handwriting looks a little sloppier with the Lamy. But again, I'm working on that. In terms of wetness for this pen, you can see, lays down a pretty good amount of ink and I'd say it's probably medium to wet medium wetness to wet wetness, um, definitely on the wet end of the spectrum. But it's not overly wet. I don't find that it takes forever for the ink to dry, and this is Hiroshizuku dries pretty quickly anyway, and it's kind of a, the ink flows pretty well. But all in all, I'm really happy with the way this writes, and it's just ergonomically very, very good for me. 
the section is pretty much perfect. I really enjoy the way it writes. Um, and you can see if we just make some shapes, shapes, I don't know if we could call those shapes, no skipping or anything, no hard starts. I haven't noticed any problems with this pen at all. Line variation, there's not much. Um, you can see just with no pressure, and then a little bit of pressure. I don't want to push this too hard, but you get some line variation there um, compared to the cross strokes. It's a, it's a gold nib and it's, I wouldn't say it's very flexible, but it's soft kind of. There's a little spring to it. I don't know if you can see this, but as I press down, it really feels kind of bouncy and springy. So you do get some line variation. It's not something that I would really try to push very hard though. But all in all, it writes very, very well, and I'm very, very, very happy with this pen. So there you have it, the Pilot Custom 823. I think this is a beautiful pen. I think it performs amazingly well. For the money, I don't think you can really beat this in terms of quality and craftsmanship and practi practicality. The amount, the amount of ink it holds is amazing. Um, it's really, really good for a daily writer. It's something that if you fill it up once, and even if you do a lot of writing, it's gonna last you over a week on one fill. The only caveat, and the one, the one thing that some people seem to have an issue with, is the fact that you do have to unscrew this blind cap a little bit if you're gonna have an extended writing session. I don't find that an issue, but if you're not careful, if you unscrew this cap all the way, you can see then you're able to pull the plunger out a little bit. If you're not careful when you do this and you just start screwing it back in, you could strip the threads. You have to make sure the cap is pressed back in. So when I do it, I don't unscrew it all the way. I just do a couple turns and that's enough for me to get ink flow. But if you do unscrew it all the way, make sure that you push the cap back in before you start screwing it or screwing it back. It's not a flaw in the design or anything. It's just kind of the way it is. But if you're not careful, you could strip those threads. But aside from that, I think this pen is beautiful. I really, really enjoy it, and I think it's definitely worth, ch worth checking out. So thank you so much for watching. I've been your good friend Bradley. This has been Stuff and Things. You have been the audience. Good day.